Hi, I'm Mark. Coming to you from Baker's Green Acres. Today's Friday. Uh, we go to court this coming Monday, October 15th. And uh, this may very well be my last communication with you before we go. Um, there's a couple things that I've thought of that I would just like to throw in here last minute that I think are important. Many of you will be attending the trial, and that's a great thing. I want people to be able to see firsthand how this goes down because uh, this is this is a very important case. The ramifications of this uh, will be felt for a long time in not just the community of people that I'm in, but others as well. And you'll see that. I think a lot of you have a clue on that already. This is going to be decided by one man, and that's the judge. Uh, in Marquette County, the guy's name is Judge Sulka. I don't know his first name. I'm told that the guy can't be bought. And so... Maybe we'll, you know, I'm hoping for a fair trial. If we get a fair trial, we should prevail. We should prevail because uh, the declaratory ruling on its own seems to be quite vague. And we're, what this trial is about is we put in a motion to have it dismissed because of its vagueness. Uh, if you are going to arrest somebody with a felony arrest, the law cannot be vague. It has to be very specific. And curly tail or straight tail or... You guys know the drill. Um, the, the one that kills me is number nine. They keep wanting to leave that out, and that's other characteristics not currently known. So you can get a felony arrest for characteristics that they didn't even know about last Tuesday, but they know about this Thursday. See, so that's that's vague, and uh, that is unconstitutional. So we should prevail on this. Uh, what I want to talk about, though, specifically is our behavior. Now, I know everyone on... Our side is good law-abiding, uh, calm citizens, and that's what we want to show the judge, that uh, who the small farmers are. We're mostly family people. We just want a decent way of life. Um, so we don't want any remarks. We want it quiet in the courtroom. Um, last time, the bailiff was really quick to jump up and chastise our side of the room, and uh, we don't want that happening, and, and for very little, I mean, just... just they said something that was provocative and people just kind of commented a little bit. But we don't want any of that. Um, uh, nothing that would threaten anybody. Nothing that would threaten anybody. Uh, if there are signs, things like that, picket signs and stuff, let's keep it tasteful and, and kind. Um, the next thing is, if there are going to be a lot of people there, a disturbance may happen that we have no control of. So my personal request to everybody that can is to bring some form of you know, cell phone, video camera, uh, and let's get a lot of video. Let's get a lot of video. Let's get all the faces, um, name tags, stuff like that. If a disturbance does break out, let's get it all documented. Let's see who started it. Um, it, let's say that there's a disturbance and um, it happens very quickly and then it's over. Let's step up to the plate and do some interviewing. Find some people who are close by, ask them what happened, and get that recorded. If something like this were to happen, there will be another video coming from me. And I will tell you where that you can send that, where you can send that stuff. And we can uh, render that down and, and make that available to the public. You know, I can just see a scenario where someone comes and starts a problem and, uh, and then walks away. We just can't have anything like that happen. We have come really far on this thing, and we want to finish it up. Okay, uh, there's one other thing that I really have to bring to your attention. This came out during depositions, and it's a big deal. It's a big deal. And I think you all need to know about this before we go to trial. So you can see absolutely, without, without a doubt, how devious this whole thing is. This came from testimony from Dr. Nancy Frank. All right, she is a state vet. Uh, she's the number two at the Michigan Department of Ag. All right? uh, I guess been there a long time, 20 years or so. Now, in her testimony, and I'm not reading from the deposition because I'm not allowed to. I'll make that available after the trial's over, but... Right now, we're not allowed to, uh, to use that, so I'm just paraphrasing. Uh, the Department of Ag was 
this the way the plan was supposed to go is the Department of Ag was going to detail all state uh, licensed vets, veterinarians. All right? So all vets would be given the list, the deadly nine characteristics of swine, and if a vet encountered a pig that had even one of those, one of those um, characteristics, they were required by law to turn that individual in to the Department of Natural Resources. With, with that um, information, the Department of Natural Resources would have what's known as probable cause. Probable cause is what a policeman needs to search your car without a warrant. Like, he says, have you, you know, you get pulled over. Uh, hey, did you rob that bank? No, I didn't rob that bank. Well, I see a gun on the floor, so I'm going to search your vehicle. That's probable cause, all right? Now, right now, uh, let's say that you live on a farm. Let's say that you have a couple of 4-H pigs on that farm. <clears throat> right now, the way it is right now, the Department of Natural Resources comes up to your driveway, and they say, we'd kind of like to see what your pigs look like. You could say, I can appreciate that, but if you want to see my property, get a warrant. And that's what you're supposed to say. That's that's what you're supposed to say. You have no you have no need to be neighborly if somebody wants to come and look at your stuff. And you may say, Well, I have nothing to hide. That doesn't matter. You have a constitution and a bill of rights to protect. Protect. And you protect that when you make uh, the authorities that want to look through your stuff jump through the hoops that they're supposed to. And that means what they have to do is they have to go to a judge in your county that you elect, right? and say to the judge, you know, we'd like to go look at his pigs because we think they're invasive. And the judge will look at him like, nah, I don't think so. I need to get elected here. And if I'm issuing warrants so you can go on farms and look at people's pigs, uh, I'm not going to get elected. That, and see, that's the fail-safe. See, it's, it's governance of the people by the people, right? Now, if the DNR has a probable cause, they can come on your property without your invitation, without a warrant any time, day or night, right, to look for pigs. Just think about it. That was where they were going. We believe that we have foiled them. We believe that we have foiled them. Um, make no mistake, we don't think that a win in this case, which I know it's coming. I saw some geese fly over this, this morning, and, and they were in a V, right? So that's victory, right? So... Kyle Miron told me that, and that's that's true. We we will prevail on this. But make no mistake, I don't believe that this is the end of the road. They will come back at us. They have no reason not to. I mean, they're employed by the state, and they have all the money they need, our money. Uh, so why shouldn't they come back at us some other way? They probably will. Don't worry. We, we have that covered. We have a program to, to take care of that. I just think it's kind of interesting that I have to go to Marquette. It's about a five-hour ride. It's probably going to take a hundred bucks worth of fuel to get up there. Not a hundred bucks worth to get back. Two hundred bucks that I have to take out of my own pocket. Uh, any of these DNR people or the attorney general people that are going to go up there, um, I don't think they're paying for gas, are they? Probably not. I got to stay with friends. I got to take half my family, leave them here, and then half my family's going. I have to stay with friends to keep my costs down. Well, we don't have the money for hotels. Uh, I wonder if the DNR is going to be staying with friends. Probably not. I wonder if they're going to even double up. I don't think so. You know who's paying for that? You're paying for that. Think about that. Think about that. Remember, anyone can farm and hope you do.